So today I'm going to be showing you what a mold is. Now, before we begin, hit that subscribe button because this is just one small piece of a long, complex process that I want to show all my viewers here so that you can understand how a sculpture is created. So this week I'm going to be answering a common question that I get, especially when I show pieces, I'll have my sculptures all uh, displayed at an exhibition or art show or something like that. People will say, okay, you sculpt it out of clay, then do you fire it? And I get that all the time. And I have to say, no, you don't fire the clay. You use something called the lost wax method and what that means is you take a mold of your sculpture. So today I just want to talk about the mold and what the mold is because this just confuses people. And I'll explain the whole process, but it's very complex as I'm always saying here. So I just want to focus on one area of that process at a time. Today I'm just going to show you a few molds here and talk about how they work. So this is a World War II hero, a soldier, and the uh, gentleman who ordered this piece sent us a photo and uh, the face was copied from a photo, okay? So that was a big piece, but here I just have the face. So let's say we were ready to make, or we were ready to turn this into bronze. Okay, we have the clay. This is clay right here. It's darker clay, but this is clay. So the next step is to create the mold. And what that means is we take this and we section it off. That's why he's cut along here. And then what we do is we cover that sculpture with a layer of rubber. Okay, and that rubber captures every little detail that's sculpted into the clay. So once the rubber's on, then we put on a layer of plaster and what we get is this. Now this doesn't look like much right now, but this is our mold. This one's quite dirty too. So I'll open this up. And then on the inside, you will see that we have our rubber and then our plaster. This is hard. This is rubbery. <laughs> now the hard shell is so that it holds the shape because that's a lot of weight when you fill this up with wax and that's why they call it the lost wax method because we take this and we take a mold of it so that we can duplicate it into our wax using this. So once we do that, what we do is we pour the hot wax in here, let it cool, pull this off, and then we have an identical clay sculpture. Now, it would be wax. This is clay, but it would be wax. And we pull that out, and then we dunk this in a cinder slurry. And that slurry is what the hot metal goes into. So, and like I said, I'll be putting out more footage showing this whole process and how it works. But I just wanted to show you what a mold is today. For those of you who don't know or don't, don't understand what happens after the sculpture is cast in clay. Now, I wanted to come over here quick to show you that uh, the rubber, this is some rubber right here that's dry, is made using a two-part solution which you see right here. And then the plaster, or this is paper mache, which is similar, usually just comes in a bag of powder and uh, you mix it with water um, to the right consistency and then put that on. All these supplies for molding are uh, fairly expensive and you need to really know what you're doing. It's, it's a little bit of an art uh, 
being skilled at molding takes a lot of experience and understanding uh, what you're doing because you need to think about how the mold's going to come apart and then how it's going to be put back together and you need to think about how the wax or whatever material you're pouring into it is going to uh, fill every space so that you really do get that detail when you pull it apart. Now I'll show you something else here before I let you go. This is very interesting because this is another type of mold. It's very similar. You have the plaster and then you have the rubber. So it's pretty much the same concept. You see we got our face in there. This is my, my younger brother did this. He's in filmmaking and he'll create all kinds of props and uh, faces and it, he's just pretty talented at that stuff. So there's another way to do it if you're not casting in metal. You can use a mold to cast in almost anything or uh, create anything, I mean. Usually when I say casting, I mean uh, turning it into metal. So this is fiberglass and some people will paint the inside and then they'll put the fiberglass fibers on. And when it's all said and done, you pull it out and you get all the detail on there. Now let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. My, I'm using my phone to film as always, but I can feel the texture of the skin my brother took an alginate mold of one of the actor's faces and then duplicated it using his mold here. And, and that's alginate. That's a whole other uh, topic to cover. Um, alginate is what they use when they'll, they'll take people's faces and they'll make a mask over their face. And then they'll, they'll put straws in your nose and cover your eyes. You got to keep your eyes closed. <laughs> but you get your face covered in alginate and they'll peel that off. They'll pour the hot wax or clay in there and then they'll create a mold. So it, it's a lot of stuff. I'm just trying to uh, show you a few things here and then as time progresses, I'll be able to put more of my footage together kind of in one. It's just such a long process that it's hard for people to understand what's all going into it. But the basic thing to take away from today's video is that the mold is when you take your clay sculpture so once again you take your sculpture cover it with rubber which is this that's what you get right there and then after the rubber's on it's still on top of it then you cover it with plaster and that hard shell holds its shape so something interesting to talk about today please leave any questions or comments in the comment section below um, if you have any more ideas for short, quick little topics to cover, let me know. And uh, I'll try to see if I can do something with that. So that's it for today. Just wanted to show you what a mold is. So I will see you guys next week. And uh, I'm not sure what I'll be putting out. I haven't decided yet. I have a few different things. But that's it for now. We'll see you guys then.